This story, the broken heart part, all starts in 1923 with the purchase of this engine, the 2719, by the Sioux Line Railway for the astronomical price of $47,019.64 from the American Locomotive Company, Elko. And it's fast. These overside drivers were made for speed. She could do 90 miles an hour, which made her perfect for passenger train service. And that's where she was employed by the Sioux Line. Running the Laker, one of their most famous trains, it was an overnight all Pullman Express from Duluth to Chicago. You'd get on the train in the evening here in Duluth and wake up the next morning in the Windy City and vice versa if you were coming to spend time at the head of the lakes. Another train that this pulled was the Dakota out of the Minneapolis area and of course it went to the Dakotas. Built for speed with these drivers. This 462 wheel alignment was kind of like the model number for the Pacific class locomotives. The lead truck, four wheels. Six drivers, a pony truck trailing with two wheels. That was of course the four six two wheel alignment of the Pacific class locomotives. Now how did it get the name Pacific? Well in 1902 is when they actually premiered this wheel alignment and this classification. In railroading the first railroad to buy a particular class of locomotive gets to name it and the first 462 locomotive was purchased by the Missouri Pacific Railway. So they named the engine after themselves and called it the Pacific Class. This engine got a new tender in 1942. Other than that, it was pretty much as purchased, with the exception they added an automatic stoker. That was an aftermarket. Then the engine gets into the 1950s and the Sioux Line starts to dieselize. And they decide they're going to save one locomotive for posterity. They picked the 2719. It goes into the shop when they still had the manpower and had the knowledge and they had the tools to rebuild the engine. She got all new tubes, got everything fixed on her, and it was going to be the showcase of the Sioux Line Railway and their farewell to steam tours. That lasted about a year. In 1960, they gave up, donated it to the city of Eau Claire, and there it sat in Carson Park until the late 1990s. Finally, the Locomotive Tower Preservation Fund gets the engine restored and it's back on the wheels again and the rails again in the late 1990s. 1998, she takes her first run and from 1998 to about 2001, the engine sees a lot of excursions on the main line on the new Wisconsin Central Railway. But then, of course, that railroad is sold to the Canadian National. Main line tours kind of dry up and the engine sits outside in Altoona, Wisconsin, in the Union Pacific Yard, where it becomes an attractive nuisance. That's where the Lake Spear Railroad Museum comes in. Over this time, without any excursions to run, the Locomotive and Tower Preservation Fund goes defunct, and there's no one to take care of the engine. Steve, King of the Rail fans, Glashinsky comes up with the idea that this engine belongs in a museum, the Lake Spear Railroad Museum. We convinced the city of Eau Claire which had sold the engine to Locomotive and Tower Preservation Fund for a dollar to exercise their right to repurchase it for a dollar. We then buy it from the city of Eau Claire for two dollars and bring it up here and run it on the North Shore Scenic Railroad where it is the delight of thousands because it's such a great running locomotive. Frank Christofferson, one of our all-time best engineers, says it's the best engine he's ever run and he ran steam for the Great Northern back in the day. It performs perfectly. There's a problem though. There's a three-year clawback in that purchase agreement that allows the city of Eau Claire to buy the engine back at any time in that three years for four dollars. And with one month left in that contract agreement, they exercise the option and buy the engine back with really no plans of what to do with it. Maybe put it back in a park. A perfectly good working steam locomotive is going to be mothballed and stuffed like a, a head of an animal above a mantle and in some den somewhere? Well, this is not right. So we start charging the city of Eau Claire an astronomical fee to take care of the engine for them. Because the other thing they didn't figure out was how they're going to move this beast. Turns out, you can't. Not over the rails anyway. And certainly not by trucking without spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
After a while, the city of Eau Claire relents, and we buy it back from them for $8. <laughs> you see how it doubles every single time? 15 years, this thing's worth a million bucks. In the meantime, it comes back to what Indiana Jones said in The Last Crusade as he's on the wash deck of a tramp freighter, and the seas are washing over that deck and fear of washing him into the sea as he tries to clutch the cross of Coronado. And he says into the camera, this belongs in a museum. And he was right. And that's where it is today and will stay. We certainly want to thank everyone who worked so very hard to save the 2719 for posterity. We want to thank the City of Eau Claire, Locomotive Tower Preservation Fund, the King, all our great volunteers that ran the engine and then worked so hard to maintain it to keep it running over the years that it was active on the North Shore Scenic Railroad. And that's a question I often get. When will this engine run again? Well, remember I told you the Sioux Line took such great care of it? And then, of course, it has so very few miles on it after the Sioux Line that this engine is actually in excellent condition. It's just at the end of its FRA license 15-year boiler period. All it needs is a new set of tubes and a boiler inspection and another 15-year license, and this engine is good to go. Meanwhile, the number 332 steam locomotive is our working engine on the North Shore Scenic Railroad right now. It's in the midst of its 15-year cycle. Our plan has always been, when the 332 comes to the end of its FRA license period, this engine will be ready to go again and will leapfrog the two in perpetuity. You'll be leaping frogging back to us tomorrow, we hope, for another exciting episode. And in the meantime, you remember what to do? Wash your hands, cover your coughs, don't touch your face, keep a social distance. If you're sick, stay home. Stay with us tomorrow for another exciting episode. And in the meantime, let's take care of each other.